Welcome to the second episode of Johnny Yu Show. Today I'm going to Simply Coffee in Burbank to meet with Tyler Ward. With almost 2 million YouTube subscribers, sold out concerts, and millions of views of his songs and vlogs, Tyler is considered one of the most influential musicians and bloggers on the internet. My goal is to get to know more about Tyler and to find out how he became extremely successful with his music and videos. Tyler, what's up bro? What Good is going you. on? Dude, thank you so much for coming today. I no appreciate problem, it. No problem. I decided to wear uh, my Tyler Ward merch. I saw that. From 2011. Nice. Yeah, just <laughs> letting people know who you are. The only sweatshirt I had in my closet. <laughs> it's cold out in LA. It's cold out here. Cold is in like 60 degrees. Yeah, it's in 60 degrees, perfect temperature. Yeah. Bro, <laughs> oh, let me know a little bit about who about you. Who's Tyler Ward? I'm, an origi I'm originally from Colorado and I had no idea music would actually be a full-time job. I thought it was always going to be a hobby. I thought I was going to make maybe $100, $250 on the weekend playing bars and then go to school and, you know, be a teacher and a football coach. But there were other plans. I discovered YouTube and YouTube allowed me to make a living doing music. And here I am in LA, the last place on earth I thought I'd ever be. Why is that? I just, it's interesting, man. Like the city's scary. There's a lot of people, a lot of people chasing dreams, a lot of selfish ambition, and it just seems like an overwhelming place, but I find myself kind of at peace and creating like roots here. So at what point did you realize, oh my gosh, what I'm doing on YouTube is more than a hobby. This is actually like a career. The first time I ever uh, was able to pay my dad rent. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. I got a check in the mail. Um, it was not, it was an email, obviously it was electronically delivered. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that's what I would make if I was working at Starbucks this month. And I was like, is this really happening? And so my dad was so generous. He was like, I'm gonna pay for your rent and your car for two years, right out of college, like for two years. And then you're out on your own, man, I'm kicking you out. And so about a year and a half in is when I discovered YouTube and I'm like, just so thankful. Yeah. Okay, so you are a lot more than just a musician that goes on tour. You also record albums, but on top of that, you're also a vlogger. Hello, people of the internet. Welcome to the Yellow Boxes Vlogs. Which is a video blogger. So yes. tell me a little bit about what you're doing. You're doing so much. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing, man. I just, I wake up and it's like, all right, what's on the play? You know what I mean? And so sometimes it's producing a record. Sometimes it's working with an artist. Sometimes it's developing an artist. Sometimes it's doing my own music. Sometimes it's writing a song. Sometimes it's, I got something I just need to say. And so I need to write it out and say it and then edit it. And then sometimes it's editing a video. And sometimes it's shooting a music video. And sometimes it's going to the other side of the country to play a show. And then sometimes it's, you know, just going back to Colorado so I can rest and not think about anything. Yeah. So what's your favorite part my of favorite all that? My favorite part is honestly, man, just waking up knowing I get to do what I love to do for a living. So even if it is so different, even if it is coming to a coffee shop to do an interview with, with a good friend of mine, I, I have the freedom to do that, which is amazing. Or even if it is playing music for a couple hundred kids across the world, like just to be able to share. I don't know, it's, it's fascinating when people around the globe know who you are and you get to like impact them in a specific way. And that's such a privilege and such a responsibility that I'm like, man, this is amazing. And yeah. I sh it's, it's a gift every day, man. So it's just cool waking up and yeah. just knowing I can do what I love to do. And you do a lot of covers. A lot of covers on YouTube. Yeah. And that's probably one of the things that got your name out there. It was the, it was one of the, yeah, one of the primary things that got my name out there. And how does that work? I mean, legally, can you do that? How does that work? <laughs> the cover thing is interesting, man. Um, I remember starting in 2010, uh, just practicing on myself. Cause I was like, okay, what am I going to do in music in order to make a living? And I was like, I can't really be an artist. I <laughs> am in Colorado. So I have a bunch of friends who are really good, so maybe I'll just practice recording. And so I'd have friends come over, like, it's so funny, there's a girl who has a full-time career on YouTube, her name's Alex G. And she would come over to my place in Colorado and she'd record, and I'd practice on myself, and I'd put like songs out online, thinking, I don't know, maybe someone will find them. And then people found them. And then they would request more and more. I was like, whoa, this is, this is crazy. And then one day, I was like, I got an idea. My friend goes, oh, Tyler, did you know that they're going to remake We Are the World for the 2010 Winter Olympics? And I was like, no. 
So I went back and listened to like the 1980s something version. It was with Michael Jackson and all these huge artists. I was like, if they do anything like this, then we should probably see what happens if we do our own version. So I got all my friends together, we recorded a version of it, and I remember releasing that the day before the new one came out with like Justin Bieber and Katy Perry and all these big artists. And they put theirs out on, yeah, in February of 2010, and that was the most searched for video of all time. Wow. And mine was right underneath it, my cover. And so I was like, wait a second. And so within the next like two or three weeks, there was over a million views. And I'm just here in my dad's basement thinking, what just happened? Like I just reached more people in three weeks than I have my entire life. So I've got, there's gotta be something. So what I started doing is finding popular songs like the Katy Perry's and like the Eminem's and like all these chart topping songs and took the like the elements, the core of them and then just put them into acoustic like renditions and decided I'm just gonna produce myself as I practice and put these songs online, make them searchable. And people either, they would find them, they would love them, or they would hate them. And so the people who loved them would just, you know, they'd be like, oh, what do you, you wanna do this song, you wanna do this song? And then eventually, like within a year and a half into doing that, I was like, I wanna put out my original stuff because I've always wanted to write and record my original stuff. And the crazy thing happened was, I, it was it was a year later. It was late 2011. Oh, it's heels. <laughs> um, the crazy thing, about a year, year and a half later, I can't remember the time frame specifically, but I put out uh, an EP called um, Hello Love Heartbreak. And it was my first original release worldwide. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Put it out, and it went number one in 13 countries. I was like, what in the world is happening? So from there I was like, alright cool, we got something special and here I am today doing the same thing but kind of, you know, not necessarily doing the covers all the time but working with different artists, developing other artists, kind of playing behind the scenes, doing some management stuff. Um, you know, you can only do covers for so long before you get drained. So you, with doing the covers and all that, that was at a time where it was somewhat controversial like should you get paid for it? I mean, a lot of the stuff you're doing is very original. Like, there are things that I would not listen by artists, but your covers make you're, them way cooler. Are you just being nice? No, like, I don't feel comfortable <laughs> listening to a Katy Perry bubblegum stuff. Okay, okay. But okay. if it's you, then I'm like, I'm still a man listening to a manly, okay, but like pretty it. song. I like it, I like it. <laughs> so I you like actually it. are, you're, you're doing something, even though maybe it's a cover, but it's appealing to different crowds sometimes. But some people may argue and say that's a cover. Is that really yours? So my question for you is, like, how did that all happen? I mean, you're in history books because of that. You kind of helped change the history of YouTube. Let me know a little bit about what uh, happened. So remember around that time in 2010, I started putting out a lot of covers. So around the end of that, Sony, the publishing side of things, and Sony contacted me and they were like, you're going to shut down your YouTube, uh, take down all your songs, or we're going to sue you. And I'm like... And at the time I was thankful because I had a lawyer and he knew the people over there. So he was like, I'm going to go back to him. We're going to figure the situation out. And it took about a year and a half, two years to really get things kind of situated and organized to where after that experience, it was me and a handful of other artists who were doing the same thing, who kind of had to lead the trend and like uh, getting hits, getting fined, uh, getting strikes on our videos in order to figure out a safe system for all artists to monetize covers. And so now if you go to YouTube, and you publish a song or you have a cover, you are able to monetize and see a portion of that revenue legally, which is crazy because of all of the headaches that me and a handful of other guys had to go through, which was a nightmare. But you literally paved the way for like, like tons of musicians. I mean, you've literally changed the history of how music gets out there. I'm, I'm just a small portion of it, but it's kind of cool to think about that. I mean, it's crazy. aren't you in books and stuff? Yeah. I was, no, it was, yeah, it's kind of, I was, I was hanging out and a friend called me and she was like, yo, cause she, she went to one of the music schools in Nashville. It's like, do you know the music school in Nashville? Belmont. Belmont. She's in Belmont. She was in her, and she was in her, her social media course there and had a textbook and she was like, I don't know if you see this Tyler, but your name's here. And I was like, this is whack. This is crazy. Like I literally thought I was going to be a school teacher. It's the right place at the right time. It's this, like if someone asks me, how did you do it? How did you do it? I'm like, well, I worked hard, but 
Honestly, man, I just got, I got lucky. It was like a faith thing, man. Like, right place, right time. It wasn't me. I was chosen for it, I guess. I don't know. Is that weird to say? No, that's a good for point. For me, it was interesting because I was doing all these things, but I felt like there was a greater calling in my life. And I would feel very anxious in class if I wasn't doing music. And so I remember very vividly, and I look back now and know that that was God, saying, just go through all the doors I'm opening for you. So just say yes to every opportunity, whether it's a birthday party for grandma, or whether it's a retirement home celebration, or whether it's, you know, opening for a band that no one knows. Like, learn how to play music, say yes to everything. So I was like, okay. So I started saying yes to everything. No, no, no paying gigs, sometimes I make 50 bucks, sometimes I make tips on the street corner. And as I was doing that, I felt like, okay, I can continue on with plan B, which was everybody else's plan for me, as long as I'm doing this hobby, which was my plan A. And I didn't think that would go anywhere. But as long as I felt like I was being honest to myself and following that pursuit and that calling, things would work out. And for me, I don't know why me, but I look back and I know it's God putting me strategically in a specific place. It start, doors would open. So I would play one show here, another door would open here, and it would just follow the zigzag and maze. And I ended up here in LA. And so faith to me is just listening to that calling and understanding that you gotta take a, like a step even though you don't see the outcome. In the next episode of Johnny You Show, I continue my interview with Tyler Ward. Tyler shares a more personal side of him and his struggle with alcohol. He also gives musician and vloggers three practical tips that helped him become one of the most successful YouTubers. Subscribe to my channel and we will see you soon.